Alrighty, so I want to ask you guys a question. Does anybody happen to know what is the most common job for a male in the United States today? Anybody know? Salesman. No. Go ahead. Construction? No. Go ahead. Uh, truck driving? Driver. Yes, driver. Not just truck driver, driver. Yeah. Driver is the most common job for a million in the United States today. Guess what's coming real soon? Driving. You got it. Driverless cars. Oh my God. What is the most common job for a female in the United States today? Clerk or server? You are seeing the kiosks already, aren't you? You are seeing the kiosks already. There is a huge shift in this country happening. It will happen in other countries also, but not as fast. It will happen here very fast and is happening already. Think about that. Millions of people who were drivers, no more. Millions of people who were servers and clerks, no more. Oh my God. But people say, wait a minute, Larry. That's okay, that's normal. It happens all the time. These are low-skill jobs. People who don't have college degrees. Who cares about that? Not me, I'm going to college. I'm going to Brown, what do I care? What do I care? <laughs> right? Who cares? I'm good. Anybody know what's happening on Wall Street right now? This city, Wall Street, right now. Layoff upon layoff upon layoff. Why? What's taking all these jobs? All these really smart analyst jobs? You got it. AI, artificial intelligence, taking all those jobs too. Computer does it a lot faster, and now we just got to pay three techs versus six analysts. No bonuses for, for my computer. Big bonuses for analysts. No bonuses for computers. So now even those who went to, who went to actual school and learned stuff, ah, going away. Problem. Even more. For you guys who want to say be a lawyer. What's, what's, what's dealing with that? How, how are we dealing with the lawyer issues? Go ahead. Computers faster. Absolutely correct, yes. Now the, the, the grunt work jobs that lawyers used to have to be trained to do is now being done by a computer, by AI, again and again and again. Not just that, basic forms you need, all computer generated. Used to be written up by a lawyer, not anymore, not computer writes it up. All these jobs we thought, well I'm safe if I go to college, I'm safe if I get educated, I'm safe if I get credentialed, I'm safe if I do that. No, there is literally now a machine that lays bricks. I'm not joking. Even a bricklayer may have a problem. There's literally a machine that will lay, a, that will lay bricks across a wall and create a, a wall faster than people. Wow. All bad news. It's all over. Run away. No, of course not. AI and technology is one of our biggest issues we're dealing with. Believe it or not, not immigration. Right? That's not the issue. I know we're all upset about immigration. I'm not saying we should or shouldn't handle immigration, but that's not our biggest issue. Our biggest issue that will disrupt us, that will tear our country apart, is technology. Easy though. If you're on the left, you tend to blame the corporation. They're evil. If you're on the right, it's the immigrant. He or she's evil. Neither is evil. The issue is we are having disruption and we have to deal with it. All right. Oh my God, the world's ending. No, it's happened before. Here's the issue. When technology happens, we have to adjust, whether that was you know, the horse and buggy or whatever it was, or the car or the computer, it doesn't really matter. But I want you to think about AI and technology like chess. Anybody remember back in the day when they first made the chess computer games? Some of you in the back with some gray hair like me may have remembered those days, right? And in those days, if you had a chess computer uh, game, a chess, the computer plays against a human, very often the human would win. In fact, in the early days, the human, the chess master always won in the early game, in the early days. All of a sudden then, human meets chess, human meets computer, I'm sorry, then all of a sudden, computer beats human. Now, almost always, the computer beats human. Almost always, the chess master, the computer almost always wins. But what beats the computer, anybody know? Yeah. Well, what beats AI? No, AI usually beats human. Mm -hmm. What beats AI? It's kind of an exponential one, right? Yeah, Just other AI. Other, I don't think there is something that can beat Human it. plus AI. Mm. Human plus AI beats AI. So our goal is to understand how we can harness the technology. Not to be afraid of it, but to work with it. To harness it. To work with it. Because then we beat the AI. If we simply put AI against AI, where's the human? That's a real bad idea. 
right? That's the Terminator, right? That's for you guys, may know, that's Skynet takes over the entire world, right? That's AI versus I, AI versus AI. Yes. yes, that's what it is, exactly right, yes. Human plus AI beats AI again and again and again and again, right? When all of a sudden we have the plow and we have a horse behind the plow, well, that's awesome. But what's more effective than a horse with a plow? No, but at that time frame, when you don't have a, when you don't have a tractor. When you don't have a tractor, right, you just have a horse and a plow. You put the plow into the horse, horse, go. That's effective. It's good. What's more effective? When a person is controlling the horse. Yes, that's even more effective. Exactly correct. This has happened before. This isn't the first time. It looks different. The idea is the same. So I want you to realize that that's what's happening with us. Now you might say, but Larry, that makes sense. But what if I want to be like a plumber? Come on. I want to be a plumber. Yeah, I said I wanted to be a plumber in my next life. Yes. Right? Look, the world needs plumbers. Right? They're a good job. It's a profession. You decide, I don't want to go to college and go crazy. I just want to be a plumber. I like being a plumber. It's a good deal. It's a good job. Make good money. I agree. If you want to be a plumber, go be a plumber. So this doesn't apply to you, right? No, it doesn't. Oh, yes, it does. Absolutely it does. It doesn't matter if you want to be white collar, blue collar, whatever your job is, technology will affect you. Because now you want, be, you want to be a plumber. Awesome. Good for you. Now what happens? Wait a minute. I'm going to be a plumber. What technology is in your house versus your house versus your house? What technology must I use in each of those houses? How am I affected by my communication? Yeah, technology affects you too. So it doesn't matter where you want to be in your life. It doesn't matter what you choose to do. Most of you in this room will have at least five different careers. Let me try it again. I didn't say five different jobs. That's not what I said. I said five different careers. I've got 30 years on all of you, and I've had three. Right? I've had three. How many have you had? Three, exactly. We've had three. We're a little older than you, a little bit. Right? We've had three. You guys will probably have five or more. Again, not five or more jobs, five or more careers. It's probably what you have. So wait a minute, Larry, are you telling me I'm going to have to learn a whole new career? I'm telling you no. I'm telling you to learn one important thing, leadership. Of everything I talked about just now, what solves it all? Leadership. That is what we have to worry about. In this room, you must start thinking about leadership. How will I lead? And you might say, well, Larry, it's easy. I'll go to school and I'll take a management course. Note what I didn't say. I didn't say manage. I didn't say manage. I said lead. And there's a difference. Managing is controlling process and controlling resources. And that's great. But guess what does that really well already? Computers. Computers. AI. They're outsourcing management now. Yes. So while management is valuable, you're finding computers do that very well too. Instead, you have to be able to lead. Leading is critical. Leading is very important because leading gets people to buy in. Leading is all about people wanting to volunteer to do. Leading is about freedom. Leading is about not me saying, do it because I said so. Right? But instead, do it because you know it's right. Do it because you want to. Do it because you're on the team. Do it because you get it. That's not easy to do. But if you lead well, you'll make it happen. There's a guy, his name was Wayne Germanian. He said years ago, wrote a book years ago, and he said something, this is probably 20, 30 years ago. He said, if somebody who's your junior, is doing exactly what you tell them to do, now you're sunk, now you're finished. It's like what I don't want. Because again, I'm, we're, I run a plumbing company now, and you guys are my plumbers. And I say, go to a house uh, on Main Street, and they've got X, fix X. You go to a house on Main Street, it's not X. It's X on the first floor, but it's Y on the second floor. So what do you do if you do what I told you? You fix X and walk away. That's what you do. You fix X, walk away. Did my job, boss, thanks. Call me up, Larry, what happened? My plumbing is a disaster. You didn't fix anything. You guys are terrible. So what happened? You told me to fix X. <laughs> but you saw why it was there. Yeah, but you didn't tell me to fix Y. That's management. Leadership is, when you get there, fix it. If you have a problem, tell me. Is that OK? Note what I just did. Is that OK? You get it? Yeah? Great. Now he gets there. He sees X. He sees Y. He's got X. He knows it. All good. He doesn't know Y. So he does the right thing. He calls me up. Boss, I got Y here. What do I do? 
now we're leading. Does that make sense? That's what we have to worry about. Because here's what I know. You are going to be able to be into fields that you don't know, that you don't understand, but you can still be successful. Understanding the exact hows and the details and the data, that's what computers do well. I don't know it, it's called Google. I don't know it, it's called YouTube. I don't know it, it's called call, text, email, my friend, the expert, whatever the case may be, right? That's what it's called. Now I get it, now I can lead it, I can make it happen. Does it make sense everybody? Leadership is key. Now, here's a problem. People don't like what I'm saying. It's happening. They don't like it. But wait a minute. I'm a mid-level manager. I've been doing this 20 years. I've been doing this 30 years. Have you seen in this world today, maybe some of you know it. I'm sure some people in the back know this. There is a real big problem, a serious problem in the United States with age discrimination. Huge problem. You've probably seen it, yep, huge problem. People say, well, I've been doing this 30 years, how come I can't get a job? Because sadly, no one cares. They don't care. Unless you're going to perhaps academia, sometimes government, sometimes big business, some of those large institutions still care, but even a lot of those don't care as much anymore. They, they care more than other fields, but if you're not going to a large organization, academia, or into um, government, a lot of them don't care. I have 30 years doing this in a certain company. Oh, you're untrainable. That's what they think. Oh, you're untrainable. Oh, you don't know the new stuff. Oh, you're stuck in your ways. Oh, you expect lots of money just for showing up. Oh, no. When you become a leader and a manager, you're not managing time. You're leading for results. But more importantly, leaders change behaviors which change results. In your mind, you must start thinking about that. How can I change people's behaviors to get more value? How can I bring value to my organization? Not, I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm not saying you should do something for 10 years. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that can't be the basis for your success. I hope you guys go to great schools. Hope you do. But having that credential is not going to get you a job. Very clear, not. It may get you an interview. It might, yes. Credentials matter for interviews. But when you get in front of those people, they're not going to say, oh, you have cool credentials. You're hired. Your mindset was perfect, by the way. You said, I'm going to work in an ER. That was exactly what you should say. Because you will have done something. You will have brought value. You will have done something. And they'll say, aha. Elon Musk once said, and they asked him, who do you hire? He said, I hire two types of people. I hire those who have great grades from great schools and those who've done something. So I have to focus on the leadership piece. How do you get around it? Through leadership. Now, people who don't like that are getting angry. I don't like it. They're fighting it. It's a tech clash right now. Technology's bad. Stealing our jobs. We don't like it. Technology's stupid. Get off your phone. Right? You're seeing tech clash happen. And tech clash is happening because AI requires something. What does AI require to be successful? Go ahead. Big data. You got it. Big data, you got it. Without big data, there is no good AI. What do we what does it do to get big data? I've got to get you guys to give me data. Go ahead. Facebook, Google. Facebook, Google, yes. And there's actually a, back, a backlash against these people, right? Now everyone's mad at Facebook, right? Remember five years ago? Facebook's the greatest thing in the world. We love it. It's the awesomest thing. It's the future. Facebook, everything. Now it's like that guy Zuckerberg's evil. All of a sudden now it's bad. It's a backlash. There is a backlash against tech because tech requires big data. But not just that. You see it all the time. Not when you have big data. Who wants big data? Go ahead. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Big data is awesome. Big data is great because not only can I target people, but now I can catch them. And that's critical. Government's really good at arresting people. Skills that gov all governments have that. They're really good at it. They're really good at arresting people. They're really good at that. Skills that they have. So, so yes. But big data makes it a whole lot easier, doesn't it? If I've got your fingerprints, if I've got your, your face print, if I've got you on video, if, I've, if I can, and if I'm a prosecutor, if I can find any single thing you've ever said that validates my case, I will pluck that thing from the bazillions of things you said that are against, but that don't match, and I'll put that in, and you're going to jail. It makes it very easy to be a world where everybody's guilty, just decides on when I decide to target you. I'm going to target you today. Joe, you go. 
You guys are fine. I haven't taught it yet. Oh, you just made me angry. I don't like brown. Jail, you go. <laughs> there we go, yes. Actually, gone. oh, really? You're wearing black? Jail. <laughs> That's it. Gone. Once I target you, you're gone. So there's a backlash. And it's a valid backlash. It's valid. I want to be clear. It's a valid fear, a valid worry. Who's going to fix that? Almost. You got it right. You got it almost. We, yes. We, yes. The people in this room, you guys are going to be running things in 10, 20 years. You will be running things in 10, 20 years when this is hitting us the heaviest. When it's hitting us the heaviest, you will be in the middle of it. And you will decide, do I fall back to law or do I fall back to what you said, society? Always remember something. Law is a quick fix. It works short term, every time. Law works short term, every time. Short term, right? You're doing something bad, put you in jail. You don't do it anymore, yay, I win. But if society thinks that thing is okay, this just goes to the black market and it keeps happening. But we won't see it until later, why? It's in the black market. We'll see it later. Short term, I'm a winner. You're in jail, no one else sees it. What a great leader I am. Long term, I've just failed. If I change society, I win. Remember, culture is stronger than law. Always, no exception. Culture stronger than law. I'm not saying laws are bad and we shouldn't have laws. I'm not saying that. If we want to make a real change, this is a cultural change, we must change society. And it is us. And those protests will work. Yes, if people get it. You're going to be in charge. And when people come to you and go, the world's going to do something. And when you pull out your iron fist, and say, I'm going to make laws and rules in my company where no one can do anything bad ever. You've just said, I'm going to have a short-term solution that will crush me in the long run. <laughs> You've just said that. To be clear, you just said that. It will crush me in the long run. But short-term, I'll feel awesome. So we need to realize that. There is a backlash. It is happening now. You are the ones who deal with it. Here's my bit of advice. Don't get angry. Earlier today you said, what are these organizations, dumb? And what was my response? Do you remember? No. I, I said, no, they're no, I, I said, they're human. Mm, yeah. That's what I said, they're human. This is natural. Please don't think people are dumb or crazy. Some are, but most aren't, <laughs> right? Most are not. There's regular people who are affected by their environment, who are affected by their culture, society. They are. You are the ones who must change that. You must say, this is happening. I'm not mad. I get it. You're human. Hey, guys, let's move forward. Let's lead us through this. That's what I want. I want you to lead us through this. Make sense so far? Any questions or comments so far? I've been through a lot. You have something? Go ahead. I mean, Amazon is known for really doing that and focusing on these very little details and over um, analyzing everything. So, I mean, so far they seem to be doing pretty well. Do you think that in the future this is going to cause backlash? Or Yes, I do. Right now, it's very good. Here's when it becomes a backlash, and it's kind of happening in a way. Anybody here imagining becoming a retailer? Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to become. Why would you? Exactly. Why would you? Yes, like, look at that. You're scared. You're like, retail. Oh! <laughs> Literally, I thought she was going to jump out the window right now. <laughs> yes. Have you seen the retail problems now in, the, in, in this, just in New York City? Have you seen the ghost towns we have in certain neighborhoods? Mm. Right? You go outside of New York City, it's worse. Retail struggles. Why? Amazon. Right? Remember the, the, the bad backlash against Walmart? Still exists. That will happen with Amazon. I don't know when, but that will happen. Because here's the problem. Now you're having a, a situation where you have, you have a monopoly happening, but it's not a government monopoly. It's a natural monopoly. And it's a little off topic, but if you want to hear this, I'm happy. Do you guys want to hear about this? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit off topic. But in business today, right? If you saw new, anybody wants to start a new business, in, years ago, Years ago, what would happen in business is someone would say, great, I'm going to invest in your business, whatever that business is, your bakery, insert thing here, right? Whatever I'm going to do. And I want to see some profit by the first year, and then maybe I'll give you some more money, or I'll get this other guy to give you some money, and then maybe we'll expand you, buy a second bakery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. Now I give her money, I'm not going to make any money because her goal was not profit at all. Go ahead. How do we, but how, it's great, yes, but how do we define growth in this case? Uh, I guess expansion of your, you know. Of your? Uh, of your employees. Or no, not, that's a bad thing. Brands, products. Yeah. How do you define that, though? 
Not by sales. No. Not by, oh, almost. By like social media type stuff? By eyeballs. By market share. It's exactly what you care about, market share. She is assumed to make zero profit because she only wants two things. One of two things only. One, to be innovative enough to where a big company buys her or to be niche enough to be a natural monopoly. That's it. That's what she cares about. Niche enough to become a natural monopoly, right? She's the only one who sells black shoes. No one else does. You put black shoes, it goes to her website. Oh my God, she's a monopoly in black shoes. Awesome. Or she's innovative enough where Amazon goes, oh, I got to buy her. So no one's making any money for years now. Remember Twitter? No money for years? That isn't the norm. No money for years. Why is that a problem? And so who cares? It's great. Here's why it's a problem. The normal investor has no idea what he's doing. He's still thinking from 30 years ago. He has no idea what he's doing. Now I mentioned something else earlier. This is kind of coming together. It's not really what I want to talk about, but I'm happy to talk about it if you want me to. Now you have all these people in finance who are being let go, who make big money, who are analysts, and who are smart people and educated. What are they gonna go do? Work at McDonald's. What are they gonna do? Get a job somewhere, making one third of what they made with no bonus. They're afraid of that. Thank you, because they're analysts. You got it, you hit it perfectly. I'm an analyst and I got money. I'm gonna invest in the business. So I'm gonna do my, my analyze, I'm gonna analyze her. But when you have a, a leader today who's, who hits a home run, who does really well, anybody know why? What's the common thread? Go ahead. Humanity, they understand. Yeah, I think they understand how to assemble a group of people. Yeah. Yes, you've hit it perfectly. It is a leadership piece. I can analyze her business model all day, it is irrelevant. It's relevant, doesn't matter. The best, the best investors go, does she have the personality for it? Does she get it? Is she resilient enough? Does she put the right people around her? Because I'll fix your business model. That's, I can do that. That's easy. But people still think, good business models. I put money into you. Business model's great. You're not, you're not an entrepreneur. You fail. You don't make money in the first year. You couldn't anyway. I'm mad. Problem. We're losing money. That's happening now. There's, a big, there's actually a bubble in investment right now. The VC world, the venture capital world. I'm sorry if you guys don't know that. The venture capitalist world angel investor world, everyone's trying to put money into businesses because they're scared to start a business, so they invest and they lose money. I have an app that will give you a soda. Great, here's a million dollars. Boom, we lost money. Oh, what happened? Yeah, that's happening all the time. Another bubble we're happening. That's happening right now. So off, off topic, I'm sorry. But anyway, so no, that's happening now. When's it happening? Yeah, it's, it, again, this is happening now. This is actually happening now, right, as we begin to invest in these things, right? How many times have you heard of an app and then it's gone? Yeah. Someone put money behind that, yeah. right? If you heard about the app, someone put money behind it. He probably was, or she probably was an analyst off of Wall Street who got let go, right? They put money behind it, and now it's gone. If they, if they won, it got bought, if they won. If it didn't get bought, they just lost money. It happens all the time. So I'm not saying starting a business is a bad idea. I'm not saying retail is a bad idea. What I'm saying is leadership matters. That's what I'm saying. Leadership matters. Remember something. The biggest companies today did not exist 30 years ago. I'll say it again. The biggest companies today did not exist 30 years ago. Didn't exist. They did not exist. Innovation, leadership. You don't innovate by following the same old rules. You don't innovate by managing. You innovate by leading. Are we okay with that idea? All right, sorry, keep going. Did I answer your question or no? Yeah, all right, good. All right, so next piece. With the big backlash, one of the critical pieces of you to think about is security. Security, period. Security, period. If you want to get into a field, security is a good idea. It's a good idea. And I don't just mean security like there's a guard at the, end, at the front of the room. That too, but more importantly, cybersecurity. It's more important. But guard in front of the room too. That's also good. People are always afraid. <laughs> they are. People are always afraid. Always afraid. So security is good no matter what. But now cybersecurity is, is even better. Lots of people have security guard um, services that make a lot of money, right? Guy in front of a door is also valuable. But there's lots of other ways of doing it, right? How about all the people right now who are putting all these apps in their homes? All of a sudden now, here I go, I've got this, I've got, you know, okay Google or whatever in my home or Alexa, blah, 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 right? I got that in my home now, right? Who's, who's monitoring that? Room, 
You got it. Absolutely. You got the you got the baby cam, the nanny cam, you've got Alexa in your house. You've got one of those, you press the button and now your refrigerator knows you don't have any milk anymore, so it tells you to order the milk, right? <laughs> That's all the future. If you guys don't have that in your house now, you probably will. Right? You probably will have that in your apartment or your house, something like that. Well, who's hacking that? Some guy in Russia. Maybe. Yeah. Right? What did you say he was from? Some guy in Russia. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yes. Or maybe your neighbor. Mm. Or maybe your neighbor. Or maybe some guy in Russia. If you can be involved in some kind of security, home run if you can. But not just security, also planning. Because you also want to take action, right? I, was, I spent many years in the Marine Corps, and I also dealt with counterterrorism. One thing you talk about is your actions will make you more secure. One of the things I talk about, and uh, Zach in the back, he also was in the military. That's your guard at Guantanamo Bay. And we know the same thing. When you, when you are doing certain things, you make things easier or harder as a target, right? So, you, you, uh, there's, a, there's actually someone said once, the reason why Donald Trump eats so often at fast food places, I hope this is true, I don't know if it's true or not, but I like the story either way. It was in the book. It was in the book? <laughs> ah, so maybe it's true. I don't know if it's true, but I love the story anyway, so it might be true. I, I'm gonna say it, letting you know that it may not be a true story. I love the idea anyway. The reason why he often eats at fast food places was because then people don't know where he's going to eat and he can't be poisoned. It's brilliant. Yes. Yes, it might not be true. I have no idea it's true. But it's a good story either way, right? Yeah. So the concept's good, right? That if you change how you do things, if you change how you do things, you become a harder target. Your point about the guy in Russia. The guy in Russia doesn't care about your house. He cares about a house. Not your house, a house. If his house is easier to hack, well then I hack his house. I just want a house. I don't care whose it is. I'm not going, I'm gonna get his house. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I just want a house. So if you know how to plan for people or companies or organizations or groups that will make them more safe, this will also be good for your future. Does it make sense? I mean, you're gonna work in an ER, you're gonna have data. People are gonna want that because that, of course, is gonna be professional corporate espionage. Right? Same thing. That's not some guy in Russia. That's some guy from the other hospital group who wants to know what you know so they can compete against you. Boom, planning security, even with that. So it isn't just the guy in Russia, even though it may be. It could be some guy next door who just wants to make a quick buck, or it could be some big company who wants your data to, to supplement theirs. They gotta put money into something. Why do it myself when you're doing it for me? I'll just steal yours, right? So that may be an issue also. So as I bring up here, it's at both the macro level and the micro level, both. Again, guy in front of the door, my cell phone, or my hospital group of 14 hospitals, right? Or my country, or my nation, or city, or state. All the same. Now you may say, Larry, this is kind of challenging, it's difficult. It is, but it's your future. There's a huge advantage though. If you notice I mentioned blue collar, remember I mentioned the blue collar guy? The guy who wants to be a plumber? This technology is also a great equalizer. It's an equalizer for blue collar to white collar, but also a gender equalizer. You can see that where, where ideas where it used to be totally all male dominated, the wave is here. The female wave is here. It hasn't arrived yet, but you can see it on the, on the horizon. You can see it coming. Right, the World Economic Summit, Davos, if I'm not mistaken, the economic uh, forum was hosted by two women. Never happened before. Never happened before. First time. The wave is here. Look at all uh, teen novels, the heroes. Vast majority women. Vast majority women. Right? Movies. More women heroes than ever. All Star Wars movies. All female heroine, heroes. All of them. I don't know if you guys watch Star Wars movies. But if you do, all, all women. The wave is here. Technology is making this more equal. But when you do that, there will also be a backlash for this. A backlash for people who are more traditional. Who will say, no, I'm a woman. I should be X, Y, or Z because my culture tells me so. You will find that happen. And if you're a woman who says that's not right, I'll ask you the same thing. Don't be angry. And we have a problem as women sometimes. See, I'm calling myself a woman today. We have a problem as women sometimes that when we see some woman who is not advancing how we decide she should advance, we get angry. Why aren't you advancing? You're a woman not today. Sorry. See, gender, we're, qual we're making us equal today, right? Yeah. So why aren't you advancing? Why aren't you advancing the way I am advancing? This goes back to the idea of leadership. This goes back to the idea of freedom and liberty. 
if she doesn't want to advance, she shouldn't. The same way you find things more, more men doing traditionally women uh, uh, um, jobs now, right? You find much more stay-at-home dads. Much more of them now. Women and men, we can't be angry. You want to be a stay you're a man now. You want to be a stay-at-home dad? That's your thing. I'm not mad at you. Do you think? But more importantly, here's the biggest piece we have to understand. A woman by the name of Carol Hyatt told me something, and, she, and I never forgot it. She used to be an executive leadership coach heavily in the 80s and 90s. She said, women were told a lie, that you can have everything. You can't have everything. Not now. Not at once. You can't have everything. Just not at the same time. Not at the same time. But this goes for men, too. You can't have everything at the same time, which is why many of us will have five different careers. And one of those careers might be raising a child. And one of those careers might be taking care of an elderly parent. One of those careers might be starting a business. One of those careers might be being an ER doctor. Many different things. So now he decides to be a stay-at-home dad for the next five years. That's just one career. He's got four left. He's got four left. She wants to raise her kids for five years. She then goes to become a doctor. Then goes back to raising kids for five years. Then goes starts a business. Happens all the time. My wife is one year younger than me. She's already started a business, raised kids, was analyst on Wall Street. Already three careers. Right? Already. All three. This happens often. There will be an issue with gender. There will be a backlash. I'm asking you, when it's happening to you, when you see it, don't be angry. It's human. It's natural. Accept it. Are we okay on this? Mm -hmm. The last piece of disruption, as I mentioned, backlash. Double backlash. One gender and one also an actual Dutch tech backlash. Here's the problem. When there is a backlash, when there is disruption, when people are angry, what usually happens right away? Come on, what happens? I'm mad. This happened. Yeah. Do we? Say again? Sometimes, yeah. But as a culture, we're a culture now, right? Yeah. All in New York City, we're mad because retail is, is we don't, we don't riot. Not in New York City. No. Yeah. We're mad because the retail industry is not doing well. Or we're mad because we don't get paid enough. Or we're mad because there aren't enough jobs. Blame it on someone. We blame it on someone, yes, then. Like Almost never strike. Ha no, not hashtag. What does the country, what does the nation do? Someone says there ought to be a law. <laughs> Guaranteed. Someone says there ought to be a law. You said it. Right? Yes. <laughs> we'll pass a law. Someone says it. Now, here's the problem with that. It's good and bad. It actually works. Passing a law is a short-term solution. That works in the short term. It always does. Short term, it works. Look, you guys know I'm a libertarian, right? That's yeah. who I am. You know I'm a libertarian, right? Mm. So I am totally biased. I'll tell you up front. I am completely biased. I know something. Law equals force. Never forget that. At the end of almost every law, there are some minor exceptions, but the end of almost every law is a guy or a gal with a gun who will put you in a prison, who will put you in a cage. Never forget that. At the end of any law, there are a couple minor exceptions, at the end of that is a guy or a girl with a gun who will put you in a cage. So, for, so law is force. Is force effective? Short term, every time. It is a short term solution. I need money right now. Got a gun? Give me a wallet. I have money now, don't I? That was absolutely a short term solution. That worked. I wanted money, I have money. That's a long term problem, though, right? That is not going to end well for me, right? Or for you, or maybe for both of us. Yeah. It's not going to end well, right? This is not going to end well. But did it work for my. Yeah, it did. Laws are different. Law is no different. It works short term. Right? We have a problem with drugs. Arrest everybody. Wow. The crime went, went down. Huh. <laughs> it's amazing. That's amazing. Good. Short term, that totally worked. Long term, we are still feeling the effects to this day on how bad the war on drugs has crushed us. But short term, home run. I'm asking you, when you were out there thinking about these problems, this disruption, you're going to see that. Don't think short term. And he's going to help us. He's going he's to hurt us. You're going to see China is going to respond better to this than we will. Why? They can move quickly. They can move quickly. 
you will see them. They will have short-term success faster than we will. They will. We're going to have two choices. One, look at China. They're doing great. Let's copy them. That's option one. And many people will choose that. Many people will choose that because it looks great. But there's a second option. Let them. We have a better way. Our way will, will be more disruption up front, but it will be a long-term solution. Right? If the culture changes, we win. It's permanent. If the laws change, it's short-term and then a fight afterwards. Does it make sense? China will, will, will absolutely quickly fix something and it will look great. They will struggle 20 years from now. They will struggle 30 years from now. They will struggle terribly. If we don't follow that, if we see it and say, uh-uh, that's what Larry said, short term, not going to work. If we don't do it, we will be able to have a long-term solution. If we lead well, we lead by example. If we lead with communication, if we lead with empathy, to your point earlier, if we lead that way, people will get it. It will be a real long-term solution. Gender issues should not be a civil war. Tech backlash should not be a civil war. It should simply be disruption within our communities until it equals out. That's what it should be. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So any questions or comments? Other than that? Go ahead. Although, if our politicians are being elected based on their short-term results, how yes. do you expect us to change to, to making long-term decisions? It is really hard. Yes, you're, you're right. And the sad part is we often want the short-term solution, right? But you, you see it happen in every presidential um, election. Right? Every single time. I'm not just saying Donald Trump. Him too. He is also guilty of this. Anything good happens once he gets elected, it's because I got elected. Right? And every president does it. Right? Him too. Him louder. Right? Because he's Trump. <laughs> he does it louder than the others. But they all do it. Everyone. Oh, I'm president and this thing happened. <laughs> Therefore, see, I did it. As if anything that happened today was because of what the president said today. Maybe the price of Bitcoin because of that. That's about it. Nothing, nothing else changes but what the president says today. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're right. It's a problem. What does that mean? Communicate, communicate, communicate. The best leaders do two things very well. They communicate, and then they over-communicate, and they over-communicate. And the second piece is they're OK being right later, not being right right now. Right? The best leaders don't need to be right right now. You can be right later. It's tougher to be right later but it's stronger and longer term, right? You've had this happen in your life when someone said, you know, you really should do so and so. You went, you're stupid. I'm never doing that. And he said, okay, whatevs. Then three months later, wow, that guy was right. I should have done that. You remember that, don't you? That guy was right. Oh, is that me? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. All right, guys. Any other questions? Well, a big thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good luck, guys. Good luck.